Hi, my name is Tiffany Hopkins, and I study abroad in Santander, Spain, and you're going global. Who is Tiffany Hopkins? I'm a student. I'm studying history and English with a minor in Hispanic studies, and I want to go to law school. Are you in any type of clubs? Um, I'm in the pre-law society. I'm in um, Fami fraternity. I am in, I was in Relay for Life. I was in SGA. I was in a lot of organizations. All right, tell us again, where did you study abroad? And tell us a little bit about your program. Uh, I studied abroad in Santander, Spain. It's in the province of Cantabria, and it's north of, in North Spain. I was the only student from ECU, but most students were from NC State, RUNC, Charlotte. What made you want to study abroad? Um, well, I wanted to study abroad since I was in like ninth grade, and it was something I made up in my mind that I was going to do. And when I came to college, that was the first place I went looking to do. What types of things did you do to prepare? I practiced Spanish. I took the classes one through four, which is a prerequisite for the program. And um, I studied the culture. Did you have any types of fears about traveling? Um, I had no fears about traveling, which in retrospect probably was bad. Why do you think it was bad? Well. I kind of just thought everything was just going to be a fun experience and at one point me and my friend got lost in a, or stuck in a train station in Germany and I was just like, oh my god, this is a movie experience, this is so great. And my friend was scared to death and I was not. I just kind of thought it was funny and looking back on it, I probably should have been more scared of like some of the experiences, but I just thought it was just part of the experience and it would be fun, you know? But looking back over it, do you think that's what it was, just part of the experience? Because, I mean, you know, over here in North Carolina, if you get lost, you know, you just, you know, go with it and figure your way out, right? Well, yeah, it was definitely part of the experience because I didn't have a cell phone plan. So I couldn't, if I got lost, I just had to find a map or call my host mom. And at one point I didn't have a phone, so I couldn't even call my host mom. So if I got lost, I just had to figure out figure it out on my own and I couldn't go on Google Maps or anything like that. So it was definitely part of the experience, getting lost and finding your way back home. What was the first thing you did when you got settled? I tried to figure out how to watch Netflix <laughs> and uh, Hulu. I got settled, I got into my room, put my clothes up, and I probably didn't, I don't even think I unpacked all of my clothes. And then I just got on my computer and tried to call my parents and try to find a way to watch Netflix. Tell us about uh, your living and your host family. Uh, my host family was a pretty uh, well-off family in Spain, and they had they lived in a three-story townhouse-ish house, <laughs> and um, they had they were my host dad was a vineyard he owned a vineyard, and my host mom she was a teacher she taught math and English, and they had two kids one was six and one was eight, and um, they were really nice they. They knew English, the whole family knew English t to some degree. And at one point I stopped, I didn't talk to them because I didn't really know Spanish that well when I first got there. And so they would like talk to me in English and then talk to me in Spanish. So they, so I knew like kind of like both of what they were saying in Spanish and in English. And they really like worked with me to make sure I knew the language when I left. Tell us about the food. Um, the food was very interesting. I lived and the place that I live in Santander, it was on the coast. So we got a bunch of fishy seafood and that was like the cuisine there. So my host family would cook octopus, we eat tuna. Tuna was like, I ate a lot of tuna. My host mom, she would cook like mashed potatoes with tuna, um, pasta with tuna, tuna meatballs. It was just that tuna was the dish, you know? And um, my host mom, uh, she would cook a lot of fish like cod and mussels and oysters and stuff like that. So most of the food I ate was fish. How are you dealing with reverse culture shock? While I was over there, I don't think I experienced culture shock that much. 
Um, but when I came back, I think I experienced a lot of culture, so culture shock because um, I don't know, I was just so used to eating dinner at 10 or eating a big lunch and like I changed my eating habits and when I don't eat that much, definitely now that I've been back and I, I, I guess I'm more healthy. Another culture shock, I guess, was the, the drinking age. <laughs> Uh, it was just like in the clubs and nightclubs and all that over there because uh, you could just walk in any bar or any restaurant or any club and they don't even check your ID and it's just kind of like a rule like you they assume you're going to pay for drinks so they're not going to charge you a fee. All right, tell me a little bit about your traveling and spring break since you was over there during that time. I didn't go as many places as I wished but I did get to go to London and Paris, Amsterdam, Dusseldorf, and um, Sevilla. And I traveled a lot in Spain, actually. So with my program, we had a certain amount of places that we can go. And the program, we paid for um, travel expenses, pretty much. That was part of, the, uh, I guess, the tuition of the program. We saw some cathedrals and palaces that are really important to Spanish history, like in Madrid. and. Santiago to Compostela and Burgos. What's your most memorable moment? I would say the top one would be going to Paris. That was one of the places I wanted to go for like forever and I finally got to go. And at one point me and my friend, uh, we, we were standing on the, the scene, the river, and like we could see the Alpha Tower and they only light up the Alpha Tower at like certain days, I guess, or certain times of the hour. And we saw it just as it lit up and it was just so beautiful. And we were like on the river, just sitting there chilling. And it was just so cool. And it was just kind of like we just sat there and like took the moment in because it was like that was our second day, our, our first night in Paris. And it was just kind of like, wow, we're really here, we're really doing this, like, wow. And um, the second most memorable moment was actually leaving uh, Spain because we took a bus from Santander to Madrid. It was a four hour drive. But I was saying, I said goodbye to my host family and um, I was saying goodbye to my host mom and then we both started crying and then like everybody there was just crying and my host like, and then we, I remember getting on the bus and like uh, everybody on the bus was crying, even the guys so were just like, oh, like, oh my God, it's over, you know? And that was just kind of like, I guess those two moments were the times I was most grateful for the experience. So what are you currently doing? Well, I'm currently doing summer school at Socket Catch Up. I only took 12 credit hours in Spain, and so I need to catch up on my credit hours. So I'm doing summer school and I'm working at a law firm. What type of advice or last words would you say to somebody that's interested in studying abroad? I feel like if you want to study abroad, don't let anything hold you back. It would be one of the greatest experiences ever. and. I mean, they say that when you go there, it will change you. And I kind of just thought that was people just talking. But when I came back, I definitely do think I'm changed. If you're not going global, then where are you going? OK. Are you going to have bloopers? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you.